All right, Melissa, should we get started? Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for showing up today to Salty and Sweet Hanukkah Eats, our Hanukkah food demo. I'm Melissa Hoffman. I direct JIFA, Jewish Initiative for Animals, which is dedicated to helping Jewish communities align their food choices with their Jewish values. And I'm joined with Lisa from Shemayim Jewish Animal Advocacy. Um, I just want to start by getting us into the headspace of Hanukkah. I know some of us have been in that headspace for a little bit, but in case that's been delayed for you a little this year because it's unusual time. Um, when people talk about the miracle of Hanukkah, they usually focus on one of two things, right? The Maccabees, military victory, or the miracle of the oil, which was a limited resource that miraculously lasted for eight days. Interestingly, there's no mention of God having performed that miracle. So it could be that God made the oil last longer than it rightfully should have, or a group of people got together and figured out how to make the most of a limited resource and they performed the miracle of conservation, which is a core Jewish value, especially now today. And Hanukkah does encourage us to speak out about our values. And that's why we not only kindle the, the lights and the privacy of our homes, but also make known the miracles of Hanukkah by placing our Hanukkiot traditionally in the windowsill for everybody to see. And it asks us to rededicate ourselves to those values at the center of our Judaism. Um, when we entered Hanukkah this year, I'm sure many of you are feeling the real drain on our physical, emotional, spiritual resources this year. And in some ways, we've been having to keep ourselves running on a lot less fuel than usual. And that's been its own miracle. But through programs like this, we hope to bring community and meaning to your holiday and help you be sustained both physically and mentally. So we're here to have fun make some comfort food. Um, I hope this will help inspire you to rededicate yourselves um, to conscious, compassionate, sustainable eating and to shine that light out into your homes and past your windows into the greater community. Uh, and I will turn it over to Lisa to introduce herself and then pass it on to our featured demo chef today. Thank you, Melissa. I really enjoyed what you shared. Um, I'm also thrilled to welcome you all here. I'm Lisa Affelberg. I'm the director of Shemayim Jewish Animal Advocacy. I'm so happy to be celebrating Hanukkah with you in this way, and especially bringing SC Raviv to all of you. Um, so I'm going to quickly introduce SC and then turn it over to her. Um, so brief intro, SC loves cooking and loves healthy food. She was born in Israel. Um, when she was growing up in Israel, her family's meals were influenced by both her Middle Eastern location and the Eastern European flavors that come from a Romanian mother and a Polish father. They were further enriched through the family's frequent travels. She continues to love to travel and loves art and creative expression and is a graphic and jewelry designer as well. Um, cooking is a passion for Essie that is relaxing and also provides a creative outlet. She loves to host dinner guests and to teach cooking classes and spread her love for healthy and creative cooking. All of the recipes on her amazing website, which is from Essie's Kitchen, are developed by her. And she recently launched her How to Entertain in Style with Vegan Cheese workshop on her website. Her new book, Oive Vegan, which was a Hanukkah gift in our house, is fabulous. And she's been appearing regularly on TV in Portland, Oregon, where she lives with her family doing cooking segments. She's also been featured in Vogue magazine, Vegan Life magazine, UK, and many other notable places. As she enjoys sharing her knowledge and experience with people who want to become plant-based and don't know where to start. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Essie. Welcome and thank you so much. Thank you for having me and I'm so excited to be here and uh, share what I know uh, and give tips uh, for a delicious Hanukkah healthy uh, recipe. Uh, Hanukkah, um, one, of the, um, one of the traditions is to eat things that are fried in oil. Um, for the little oil that lasted eight days. And it doesn't resonate with healthy cooking uh, uh, as much. So I still wanna keep the tradition and yes, do the traditional food like latkes. And I um, 
created these uh, cookies for with Hanukkah shapes. Um, and I was able to make it all healthy and guilt-free. And yeah, so I'm happy to be here and to share with you everything that I do at my house, in my kitchen. <laughs> so um, I was thinking we'll start with the latkes and then we'll move for, to the cookie. Um, so the first tip I will uh, give you is uh, I grated these potatoes have uh, the tendency to uh, get brown and basically oxidize, right? Oxidize? Yes. So what I do to keep them nice and white is I grate them in the, first of all, I grate them in the food processor after I peel them. So really the most of the job is to peel the potatoes, but once the potatoes are peeled, it's so easy to grate them in the food processor. Once they are grated in the food processor, we can start working uh, towards the crunchiest baked latkes. So how do we do that? Um, I am going to drain the, the uh, potatoes and I'm gonna go to the sink, do it there. And that's our first stage. So first stage, I'm going to drain the potatoes. Esty let us know ahead of time that she would love to answer questions as well. So please feel free to either to put questions in the chat and I will um, share them with her. Perfect. So now that the potatoes look how beautiful they are. So for our cooking uh, demonstration, I and, and for uh, I'm doing lots of uh, cooking uh, segments on TV. I like to prepare everything in advance so I don't waste time and, and I have everything ready to go. So what I did is I grated these potatoes yesterday. And as I said, I put them in water and the water helped them to stay nice and white. Now, in order to, um, to make our potato latkes really crunchy and give them the fried uh, feel, you know, texture, we need to dry them as good as possible. So what I'm doing, I'm taking just a clean white cotton um, uh, towel, kitchen towel, and I'm just going to lay it here on the surface. And I'm going to, to pour the potatoes just like that. And now I'm going to hold the towel on top of my bowl and I'm going to twist it and to squeeze all the leftover liquid from the potatoes. And this is probably the most important stage of making really good baked latkes. Look how much liquid is coming out. Even if you don't soak them in water and you grate them and then you just, um, you know, doing the whole process right away, uh, potatoes has so much liquid in them. Perfect. So I think we're good. And now I'm going to take the bowl where I am going to mix all the latkes ingredients. So I'm just going to drop, um, I'm just going to drop the potato. Perfect. And look how they're super dry, super dry. Beautiful. They're not only dry, but they're beautiful white, as if I just braided them. Next thing, and that's optional, not everybody likes um, onion in their latkes, I do. Uh, it adds really nice, not only nice flavor, but it really adds um, uh, kind of, it, it makes them softer, um, more, yeah, more soft inside. So I did the same thing with the onion. I also, I grated it in the food processor 
uh, but you can also chop it by hand and then I dry them. So I'm just gonna add the onion to the potatoes. Next, I am going to add, instead of adding eggs, uh, like um, the regular latkes, we're making them vegan and gluten-free. So I'm adding flaxseed meal. Flaxseed meal uh, mixed with water. Uh, so you basically take a quarter cup of, uh, for this recipe, it's quarter cup of uh, flaxseed meal, and you mix it with uh, three times same amount of water. So three quarters of water, and then you let it sit. After you let it sit for at least 10, 15 minutes, it becomes like a jelly-like texture, which is our egg replacer. That's gonna hold and bind the latkes together. Perfect. And now we're gonna add some olive oil. I use just a good extra virgin olive oil. And that's also gonna keep it nice, crunchy and, um, and moist. And um, I'm gonna add now, uh, I'm adding oat flour, gluten-free oat flour. You can basically add any flour that you have. I keep mine gluten-free and with the gluten-free oat flour, it's very mild in flavor and it works perfectly. So I'm adding this and I'm gonna add some salt. Potatoes like salt. So I'm adding generous amount of salt. I like them salty. And I'm adding also some pepper. Perfect. And that's basically it. Now I'm gonna mix with my hands. And when I'm mixing, I want you to see that I'm kind of squeezing into the butter. I'm squeezing to get all the ingredients really well distributed. Um, and just like that, so that the, the uh, flaxseed, the flaxseed um, egg, egg replacer, the salt, the flour, everything gets really nice and uh, mixed. Beautiful. Uh, and I see oh, before. Oh. And see, before the salt, you added the oat flour? Yes, I did. I did. How much? Thank you. Uh, oat flour, I added a third of a cup. Okay. Yeah. And the recipe is going to be up, so you, you'll get the, the full recipe um, with the right amount. So now, my butter is beautiful. I want you to see how it looks. <laughs> Perfect. And now for the fun part. Um, I do the latkes year round. That's uh, a secret that I'm telling you right now. Uh, just because it's so good. But in Hanukkah, to make it extra special, I'm using Hanukkah cookie cutters to make my latkes um, just nice and festive. So I have here a menorah and I have some dreidel, I have a dreidel. And this is a star, this is not a uh, uh, Magen David. I do have Magen David, but I'm gonna keep it for the, uh, for the cookies. So I'm just using those fun cookie cutters and how I do it. So I take some of the, of the butter and I kind of squeeze it in my hand. I squeeze it to like a little bowl and I place it inside the cookie cutter and I press with my hand tightly into, into the mold, just like that. And I need to take a little bit more for the menorah's leg. So I'm just gonna press a little more. Perfect. And while, and while it is, I, I check that it's super firm and it's really nice and tight, then what I do, I hold in one hand, I hold the latke and I pull up the cookie cutter and ta-da, I have here beautiful menorah and I'm gonna show you. Just a second, to show you how pretty it looks. 
See? That's that's amazing. I can't believe how well this shape stays. Is that probably because you dried the dried all the ingredients out so well? Exactly. So uh, um, uh, it was a learning experience. So in the beginning, when I did those, I I didn't bother to squeeze the potatoes. I because I thought that if you have the flour and you have the flaxseed, it's going to absorb the, the, the excess uh, liquids. But the thing is, it works even if you don't squeeze the potatoes, but then they're not going to, they're going, they're not going to hold their shape. So uh, yeah, they're kind of, they're going to spread. And when I squeeze the potatoes and I do it just like I showed you, it keeps the shape beautifully. And I, let me show you when I remove this block and I'm going to show you some that I made ahead of time and look how beautiful it holds its shape. Amazing. Perfect. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, they really do. And so what I do, I always love yams. So I'm using the same uh, exact technique and the same recipe to do yams um, latkes. And I'm, I'm sure you can do the same thing with uh, zucchini. And yeah, zucchini, uh, what else? Something, you need something starchy to kind of help it hold the, the, the shape. But uh, that's the big secret. Now, another really, really good tip that uh, we need to remember. So when we have the latkes already on the baking sheet, so I, as you see, I use a parchment paper, put them on the baking sheet. Uh, what I do before I put it in the oven, I take olive oil and I drizzle it with olive oil. Um, again, pretty generously uh, to create that frying uh, uh, texture. And, um, yeah, I can go ahead. Wonderful. Esty, there were two questions for you. One was, um, would you do anything differently if you were going to fry them than what you did putting them on the cookie sheet? No, same thing, just fry them. Yeah, you can do it. Okay. I just and then, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The other question was, sorry, do you want to answer, finish answering the frying question? Um, no, I'm just saying that um, I personally like them baked also because it goes super quick and in one batch, like I have a whole tray that goes into the oven and it takes about 35 minutes and, and they're perfect versus when you're frying, it's a big mess and, uh, you know, a little unhealthy, um, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's, it's absolutely per personal preference, you know? Totally. And then the other question was, do you think carrots would work? Yes, absolutely. Great idea. Great idea with carrots. Yes, absolutely. It will work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I can go ahead and do some more or we can jump into the cookies. What do you Let's say? jump into the cookies to make sure that we have time. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to put this one aside. And I'm going hey, Esty, I just want to tell you, my name is Brandon. Yeah. We made your latkes for some pigs at a sanctuary this weekend, and we made a pig-friendly, onion-free version of your latkes for the pigs, and they went crazy for them. So I thought you'd enjoy hearing that. Oh, I, I'm so happy to hear that. That warms my heart. Thank you for sharing. This is so wonderful. Where are you from? Seattle, Washington. I work at an animal sanctuary called Posado Safe Haven. Oh, wow. Very nice. So we are a little bit of neighbors. Nice. Where are you? I'm in Portland, Oregon. Yofi. Yofi. Oh, he's the Hebrew too. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> you see how, why I love doing this and hear you and get your feedback. That really makes me so happy. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> And so now, for anyone that is planning on cooking along with her, this is the part where you get to do that. Everyone should have gotten the ingredients emailed to them ahead of time. Um, Gmail had a little bit of an issue uh, 
worldwide yesterday with emails not going through. So if you if you didn't get it, that's because of Gmail, but everyone should have gotten it. And if you were trying to cook with her, this is the time, this is something new that we're trying. Um, and so if people want to want to try baking cookies while she's teaching, please do. For those of you that want to watch and spectate and do it yourself later, like I'm going to, that's totally fine too. And we can paste the ingredients as a reminder into the chat. Perfect. Okay, so whoever is cooking with me, what we are going to do now is we're going to take a glass bowl. Why do I take a glass bowl to mix all the ingredients? It's because I want to uh, save dishes. <laughs> so I am going to uh, pour, actually, no, sorry. I'm going to have my daughter help me put it in the microwave, the coconut oil. Thank you. <laughs> my daughter is here, she's my tech support, and she's my helper behind the scenes. And she is a full-time medical student, so she does it all. <laughs> and I'm very proud of her. So I'm going to wait for the coconut oil to, to be melted so that I can um, uh, go ahead and show you what we're doing because we're going to start mixing first the wet ingredients to the same bowl um, and, and then shape our cookies. And Esty, while you're waiting, I'm just, I'm looking at those cookies in front of you on that stand. Are those the ones we're making? Those are the ones. Look oh my gosh, they're beautiful. They're really the type of gourmet cookies that if you have, you know, gone to the store to buy them, they'll cost a fortune. So you make them at home in fraction of the price and I'll show you how easy it is to make them. Um, it's a beautiful, also a beautiful uh, Hanukkah gift to give to your friends. It's so nice. For sure. Something that is homemade uh, has so much uh, value and, and personal touch and it's just really nice. For sure. The person knows that you were thinking about um, them. And so I always like to give um, gifts of, you know, things that I'm making. Um, so I have here the coconut oil and I, what I did here with the measurement, I doubled the recipe just because I know that I want to give some gift for my friends and, and we just love these cookies. They're so healthy and delicious. And um, so I always like to have them at home. So I added the coconut oil. To that, I am going to whisk a, the maple syrup. So I'm using pure maple syrup. And that's really important to use pure maple syrup and not just corn syrup or whatever it is that has the maple flavor. Uh, you want to use the real thing. So With the coconut oil, um, do you have to worry about the temperature at all after you've heated it up to melt it? No, no as long as it's melted, it's perfect. It's, it's one of those oils that are um, not going to burn or anything. So just to melt it, just a few seconds. To that, I'm going to add the vanilla extract. And that's going to give you that really nice gourmet and aroma. Beautiful. Excellent. To that, I'm going to add just a pinch of salt. The saltiness will also help get the, the nice uh, um, sweet flavor out. So it's going to, to um, um, like to, to sharpen the, the, the nice uh, sweet flavor. Next, I'm adding uh, almond flour. Almond flour, um, and you see this is a blanched almond uh, flour, really thin, and um, almond is high protein, low carb, so it's amazing, so, so healthy for us. I'm adding it right into the wet ingredients, and I'm still gonna use the whisk um, up to this stage, 
and then I'm gonna move to my hand. And why? Because then it gets a little too thick to, um, to mix it with the whisk. So I'm, now I'm just gonna put the whisk aside. And I'm I going think, to, yes. Have you ever, um, have, do you think that agave can be switched for the syrup if someone has a sugar issue? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. If you have agave, you can use agave. Just on a side note, if you're using agave, um, tr I mean, try to switch to pure maple syrup in the future. It's just healthier for us. Agave contains um, what we call the bad sugar, the one that really increases our, our blood sugar. And um, I'm not going to go into details, but pure maple syrup is healthier. I used to use agave syrup in the past too, but I switched when I learned what you know, what it is made out of. Um, next, I'm adding uh, arrowroot. Arrowroot is a starch. It comes from, as it is, sound. It's a root. Uh, you can also, if you don't have arrowroot, you can use cornstarch. It's going to do the same, uh, the same thing. And that's all the ingredients, super simple. And now I'm just going to see, I'm kind of mixing it like that. In and Essie, someone asked, um, it was the question, Marjorie, if honey could be substituted for the syrup or the agave, is that what you were asking, Marjorie? Yes, yeah, so if honey... And, 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 and many vegans don't eat honey because of, of the bees, right. but um, I, I think that's probably what the question was, if, if honey could be a substitute if someone does eat honey. We're not vegetarians, but we, we support honeys and our uh, bees in our yard with flowers for them to do stuff. But you were saying agave is not good, so honey would be a good substitute? Yes. Well, yes and no. I, well, I think it will work good. I have not tried, so I don't want to say that, you know, that the texture is going to be the same. Um, because honey has that um, stickiness to it and I'm not, well, I'm sure it's going to work, but I'm not sure if it's going to be the same exact texture as if you use agave or uh, pure maple syrup, but it's definitely healthier than agave. Okay. So it's healthier than agave, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, look how pretty it looks. So what I like about this though, that it's so easy to work with. It's like perfectly moist um, and just, it becomes really nice, not too sticky, uh, but just perfectly moist and beautiful. Look at it. Wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how it looks. Look how pretty, it's just so, so moist and beautiful and so easy to work with. And as the dough is so beautiful to work with, the cookies are to die for, to die for. Okay, now I'm gonna make some room here and I'm gonna show you what we're doing. I'm just gonna clear my station a little bit. Perfect. So there are two ways we can shape the cookies and roll the dough. One is if we dust our surface with a, just with some flour and work directly on the surface. But we have another option is to take a parchment paper. I'm going to take part of the dough. I'm not going to take all of it because um, I'll do it in stages. So let's say I'm going to take about a half half of the dough and I'm kind of, I did a little kind of a log so that it's going to, so that I can um, roll it in a, you know, perfectly on the paper. And then I'm taking another parchment paper and I'm placing it straight on the top and I give it a little, little squeeze. Then I take my rolling pin. And SC, um, people are asking about your gloves, your cooking gloves. Or your food prep gloves. Yes. What are they asking? Can you tell us about them, please? Oh, I just like to cook with gloves. I have no explanation 
um, I know it's not good for the environment and I just, that's my personal preference. And are they just regular latex gloves or what are they? No, I use nitrile. Nitrile? Nit nitrile gloves, yeah. Yes, that's what I use because um, latex tend to fall apart, uh, like to break easily and these are more stretchy. And these are super thin as well. Um, but again, I, it's just my personal preference. Um, I always cook with gloves. Uh, I think that I spend so many hours in the kitchen that I have to protect my hands. Um, and that's the main reason. Um, and Esti, I have a question too about the dough because a lot of the times when I'm making cookies or like crusts and things like that, it calls for chilling the dough first. Yeah. Is there, is there any benefit to chilling the dough here or? Sometimes it is, but mainly people that are using butter. So for us vegans, not so much. I, most of my <laughs> recipes, no, no, I, I, I don't need to chill the dough. It's more to, yeah, more if people are using butter, but we're not so. No problem. <laughs> um, so now look how cute. It's all nice and um, and uh, 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 flat on the parchment paper. And what I'm gonna do, by the way, I forgot to say that my oven is already heated to 375 and then the, the cooking time is just 10 minutes. So it's super quick, which is nice. I'm taking a cute uh, dreidel uh, and I like to use, for the latkes, I use bigger size cookie cutters. And for the cookies, I use smaller size. I just like the cookies to be smaller. Uh, uh, but again, this is my uh, personal preference. So I put a cookie cutter on the dough and I, I kind of jiggle it. That's how I say it. Wiggle, wiggle. I wiggle it. <laughs> and then it comes out beautiful. Wait, no, I'm going to use that tool a minute. Okay, I have that little tool. That's my helper. And I'm just going to, that's going to help me um, pick this up. Well, I, I smoke the breast this one, but the, the, the first one never comes perfect. And it's okay. We're not perfect. It's like the first pancake, right? What? It's like the first pancake. Exactly. <laughs> um, Esty, if you can pull the cookie sheet a tiny bit towards you, um, because it's just at the off the screen, so we can just see. Did you grease the cookie sheet, or okay, you have uh, yeah, the paper on there too? Okay. Okay. Can you see now? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so I put also parchment paper on the baking sheet, of course. Now I'm gonna take uh, Star David. Now, the thing is, if you don't want the cookies to break while you make them, don't uh, don't uh, uh, roll the dough too thin. Leave, leave a little bit of the of length. What, what's the length, what's the length? Like quarter of, it, of an inch is good. And I'm just placing them. Just like that. I'm going to take a Nora. And I need to get one of those instruments to p pick the cookie up flat and put it onto the sheet. It's so good and it's so easy. Um, perfect. And these are like, my daughter was telling me that they remind her, like, these are the perfect, like, sugar cookies. Um, and they're just Plain. I like them plain. I like them even without any um, any toppings. Just like a graham cracker, like really yummy cookie to dip in your coffee or your tea. They're really guilt-free, and that's what I'm all about. I'm I'm about feeding my body food that makes me feel good and 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 things that are healthy. You know, when you buy when you buy things in the store, you really don't know what's in it, and uh, so 
especially now with the corona and everything, it's extra special, extra important to eat healthy. Um, and but you don't need to compromise on flavor and, and good ingredients. Um, and also, it's cheaper, so much cheaper. With uh, you use good ingredients that are good for you. Esty, I was curious if you ever do any kind of variation on like the spicing. Do you ever use like warm spices in this cookie, like ginger and yes. um, so, cloves and things like that? Excellent question. Excellent question. The nice thing about these cookies that these are really the plain version, but you can absolutely spice them up. Uh, use pumpkin spice, use cinnamon, use ginger, use whatever spices that you like. Um, there's, I'm sure it's gonna be so much. Oh, you know what I did also? Um, I did a batch with um, um, zest of lemon. I love lemon zest in my cookies. So lemon zest is a good one. That's really, really good. Lemon zest or orange zest, any type of citrusy zest um, also gives these cookies such a good, uh, such a good flavor. Um, now, if you, well, these cookies, I, what we did here with the decorations, I use chocolate because again, going into more of the healthy um, uh, direction, I would say. Um, so chocolate is healthy. Um, just chocolate, yes, has a little bit of sugar, but not much. I'm using dark chocolate, uh, vegan, of course. And uh, it's a lot better than just uh, using confection sugar and food coloring. And it's good with chocolate. It's so good with chocolate, right? <laughs> um, do you just, own, do, yeah? I was going to ask if do you just melt the chocolate straight up or do you add something to it to make it easier to work with? Okay, so what I do, I, uh, I put in the, in, the, um, in the microwave. I put some chocolate chips and I add a little bit of, about a teaspoon, I would say, uh, of coconut, um, coconut oil. I melt them together and then I just mix it so it's nice and, and uh, completely melted. And I can show you how I do it actually. So, oh yeah, you're gonna help me. I'm gonna put these in the oven. They're gonna be ready in just a few minutes. And in the meantime, in the meantime, we can talk uh, and you can ask me more, more questions about everything that you want. Um, we do have a question, um, SD. Um, and Brandon, thank you for sharing the list of ethically sourced chocolates. Chocolate is, is really important to look at its origin. And um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, the question was, um, do you think it's okay to soak the, so there's, uh, Valerie is not doing potatoes, she's doing yams instead for her latkes. And she's wondering if it's okay to soak them in a stainless steel bowl um, instead of a glass bowl. Yes, yes, that's fine. I soaked mine also in stainless steel uh, bowl and it was fine. Yeah, uh, now if you're using the yams right away in a recipe and you don't need them for the next day, let's say, so you don't need cooking water at all. You can just uh, squeeze them after you grate them, squeeze them in the, in the kitchen towel and just use them in the recipe. Uh, the soaking part was really uh, if you, want to prepare your ingredients, but not to do them right away, not use them right away. Thank you. That clarifies it. Okay. So no, need to, no need to soak if you're not, if you're not trying to grate them far ahead of time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, Are there other questions for SC in terms of I uh, should probably be good to ask about other egg replacers or about flax as an egg replacer. Could you repeat what you said about soaking the, uh, the, the yams? I, di I didn't quite catch that. Uh, she so said it was fine to soak them in stainless steel. Um, and that, uh, that, but if you were cooking them right away, you don't need to soak them at all. The, the reason why she soaked her potatoes is because she was preparing them ahead of time for this demonstration. 
Plus, I was told years ago, uh, if you soak potatoes, it helps get a lot of the starch out and people that have uh, renal problems can then have their potatoes. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yes. So we have uh, uh, two amazing uh, benefits from soaking. One of them is to keep them from, from uh, going, uh, you know, oxidized. And the other one, you're absolutely right. You get rid of all the starch and they do become so, so crunchy and so delicious. Um, I'm not sure if, so I, I don't think you need to do it for yams. Yams don't have as much starch as, um, as potatoes. Yeah. So. And Essie, how long um, did you, are you cooking your cookies in the oven and at what temperature? Okay, so I'm cooking them for 10 minutes. Again, it depends on every oven is a little different. First of all, I'm using convection uh, oven. So the air goes around and not just in one spot from the bottom. Um, so I, uh, for, so for me, and also it depends what's the, the um, height of the cookies or what's the size of the sure. cookies. So what I do just to make sure, it takes about 10 minutes, but uh, a good tip is just to watch them and see when the edges, you know, the edges becomes uh, golden brown, it's time to take them out of the oven. Now, another really important tip with these cookies is when you take them out of the oven, you want to put them on a cooling rack, like I have right here, just a cooling rack, and then that's also going to help um, uh, keep them nice and crunchy and delicious. <laughs> what else? Other questions? I'm here. <laughs> I was just wondering if you could say more about converting convection to conventional because I know that sometimes there's length of time adjustments, but sometimes there's also temperature adjustments. True. So when I'm using the convection oven, I'm, I'm uh, doing 375 uh, temperature Fahrenheit. And if it's going to be regular bake, then 350 is the, the equivalent. So no more than 350. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? I took like a small one. No, <laughs> hefty. Take the big one. And I'm going to do another batch until the cookies are, um, are ready. See? Is anyone cooking along with SC? I was trying to see in the screens. Is anyone doing it? Oh. We're all playing, paying close attention so we can duplicate this later. Okay. I'm telling I'm sure you. Maybe Zippy was since she asked about how long in the oven. Oh, OK. I'm telling you that your family uh, are going to love you for these cookies. Love you. They're so good. And it's, it's funny that most of the people that I gave them the cookies are not vegan. And they think that vegan is just not good. I don't know why. Why do we have that stigma? That vegan food is not good. Where do people bring this stigma? It's the best. It's, it's, it's so much better than, than, than regular cookies. It's just the Agreed. best. So even my son, I sent some, my son lives in New York and I sent him the cookies. Uh, we made a big batch of cookies. My daughter actually made them and she decorated them beautifully. And we sent him the cookies and he tried them and he loved them and he said, mom, are you sure these are vegan and gluten-free? He couldn't believe it. I said, yes, why? He said, no, because they taste like regular cookies. But why wouldn't they taste? I mean, what, what do you expect them to taste like? If it's vegan, it's not good. So, yeah. It's a, it's a long held stereotype and I am with you that it is just not the case. And in many ways, I think because we're substituting out ingredients, the end, the end product ends up being much more interesting. And we're using things that we would have never thought of, like flax seeds in place of eggs, which of course are also adding a real health benefit, right? Absolutely. Oh, there, you know, that uh, adds the fiber for good digestion. Um, it's so much better than butter, 
and eggs and yeah it has not only fiber but uh, uh, tons of vitamins from D to to uh, I don't know Lisa maybe you know but uh, it has tons of vitamins I actually eat flaxseed uh, with my oatmeal every morning. Um, you just sprinkle them onto your oatmeal? Or do you do the ground ones or do you do the whole ones? Yeah, no. So I do the ground one. And the reason is because the, the whole one, they don't absorb in your body. So that's they what I thought. Go out. So if you want the health benefits, you need to have them um, ground. So the cookies are ready. Look how quick. Look how quick. Now I'm going to let them cool a little bit before I start decorating them. So I'm just putting them on the cooling rack. As you can see, look how pretty. And they need to stay kind of uh, light in color. You don't want to burn them. You want to keep them nice and light um, and beautiful. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, it for the arrowroot, yes. would you be able to substitute something like cornstarch? Yes, yes, that's exactly what I said. Yes, you can absolutely oh, okay. use cornstarch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, arrowroot. Again, I'm I'm really focusing on the health benefits of uh, of a plant based diet, and arrowroot is just a little bit better for us. So, okay. um, so why Thank not? You. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just gonna let it. Uh, Cool down slightly, and I'm gonna take look. Look how pretty the chocolate is ready for us to uh, decorate. Now I just ordered online. Uh, there are those uh, natural colored sprinkles. Um, again, sprinkles unfortunately has all the bad food coloring that we don't want, but we do want our cookies to look nice and festive and beautiful. So, um, so today I'm using just white ones. I'm not recommending these, but this is what I have. Uh, I, the ones I ordered did not arrive yet, but um, I actually like the combination of chocolate. So the dark and then the white, it just makes it really, really elegant and beautiful. Um, so let me show you. I'm gonna take one cookie and taking a dreidel and what I'll do, just going to mix uh, the chocolate with just with a spoon. And now I'm holding the cookie just like that. And I'm starting to, uh, and I'm doing it on top of the bowl. And I'm just kind of letting the chocolate fall halfway. Um, like I'm doing a half cookie. So basically like a black and white cookie. Look how cute, you see? And then I'm gonna put it back on the cooling rack. I'm gonna take another one, uh, another dreidel, and this one, I'm just gonna hold it like that, and I'm gonna do half cookie from the, uh, like all the bottom part of the cookie. Look how cute. And, Adorable. and then I'm gonna take a menorah, and I'm just going to do also like halfway, and and it's really easy because I'm, I'm I let all the chocolate drip back in the bowl. So easy and satisfying. <laughs> so I'm placing it here, and then I'm going to take the sprinkles, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit. Perfect, and I'm gonna take, I have also some pink ones. The uh, chocolate, Marilyn, is mixed with, uh, she said one teaspoon of, of um, coconut. coconut oil. Yes. And Just, microwaved. Yes. And look how cute, I'm, I'm gonna show you again the ones that I made. You can also drizzle the chocolate like that, you know, like make lines. Mm -hmm. um, or I'll show you this one. So this one, that's a star and it has pink and white. Uh, the pink ones are a little bigger sprinkles than the white. And this is so elegant. 
adorable. They look the the previous one. It looked like you had little snowflakes on there. It was so cute. I have also a little heart. I love hearts. So Orian made me some hearts because this batch she made. Uh, also a little leaf. And what else? And do you put them in the refrigerator to harden or do they just harden on your rack there? No, they just harden on the rack. And then I store them. I'll show you. I store them in a jar on the counter and they, they will last forever. Uh, if they last, if they last, they last forever. <laughs> I don't think they're going to last uh, too long because they're just so good. I'll take a, a magenta bead now. And it and sounds just... like they do last for a while though, because you said you, sh you ship them across the country. So it, could they last for like a week without going in the freezer, you think? Absolutely, even longer than a week. Absolutely, yeah, easy, easy. Yeah, there, yeah, there is nothing uh, that can go bad, really. Look how and, cute. Uh, a, we mm -hmm. have a Toda Raba um, to you, Esti. Vavasha, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> It's and happy you. Hanukkah, Hag Sameach. This is the, the fun part of our week for sure, is getting to, to do this kind of fun stuff with all of you in, in celebration of Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to all of you, Hag Sameach. And I, I hope I, um, I was able to convey the fact that eating vegan food, healthy vegan food is not hard. And it's the same, like, making other things, just making them vegan. Instead of using butter, use coconut oil. Instead of using eggs, use flaxseed. There is a solution for everything and it makes it so much better for us, for the animals, for everybody, for our health. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other you you certainly that? did convey that very well, Esti. It's so great for us to have someone like you to work with who can demo and just show we can still enjoy all of our favorite foods, right? We just remove the animal ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. Look how cute. Look how beautiful they look. They're beautiful. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and now that everyone has, um, in the last few years, everyone has dietary issues, gluten intolerance, uh, this or that. Um, these are good for everyone. Um, what else I wanted to do? I wanted to tell you another thing. Um, 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 I forgot. I wanted to do another thing, but... Um, While you're thinking, someone wants to thank you for your cookbook. Your, her parents just got it, and they made the pumpkin pancakes and the sesame tofu so far. Oh my gosh, that sesame tofu looks amazing. We're going to yes. make it this weekend. Yay, very nice. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> That's good. Um... Happy that you guys um, enjoyed it, and I'm here for any questions that do be. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 in you're in a room full of animal lovers, so we probably all love to hear a happy dog. He's just wanting to get some cookies too, right? Yes. <laughs> no, he heard my husband is, is coming, so he heard the garage <laughs> go out and say oh, hi. Got it. Daddy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, as an Israeli, I grew up with um, eating dairy. Dairy is a big thing in Israel. And, and when I moved to a plant-based diet, I didn't know how can I live without dairy and, and you know, without my cottage cheese and, and cream cheese and everything. And I was, I, since I was a little kid, that's all I never liked, but I did like dairy. And if I were able to remove uh, cheese from my diet, everyone can. And, 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 and many times I say it's all a matter of, um, of uh, changing your state of mind and knowing that, you know, this is it. And, and you're not compromising. Then this is where I came up with my cheese workshop. Um, that I just make cheese for my own from good ingredients that are good for my body and good 
Maybe we can schedule one of those as a follow-up. That sounds really fun. That sounds great. Yes. And I see Valerie dancing in her seat. <laughs> I'm not sure if she's dancing in her seat about something else, but I have no doubt Valerie will attend the cheese workshop. <laughs> yes, she's, she's saying thumbs up cheese workshop. Esti, um, I know so, you've inspired so many people to, I, I mean, people have already been following you clearly um, on the webinar today, but I'm wondering if you can remind us all how to follow you and how to learn more about your recipes. Yes, absolutely. So first of all, I'm sharing lots of recipes on my Instagram story uh, every day. If you guys like what I'm doing and you want to get inspired every day, I, I usually, um, uh, you know, take uh, pictures, do videos of the food that I'm making for my family. And that's um, my Instagram is from Estes Kitchen. Estes, I spell E-S-T-E-E. -E. So from Estes Kitchen, that's my Instagram. Uh, that's also my Facebook page where I share my recipes there. And you want to sign up to my mailing list. And the minute you go into my website, you can do that. Um, you will get a weekly new vegan recipe that I develop. I develop weekly new recipes. And so you can find, um, you can get it into your main box if you don't have social media. Um, and yeah, these are like the channels. Instagram, I post on the feed and my stories, as well as Facebook and my main list. Thank oh, you. That's of course, my website is uh, estiskitchen.com. And over there you have my blog and you have all the recipes in one uh, one place yeah so and we'll send we'll also send this out as a follow-up to everyone who attended today um with also the two recipes that you shared today to make sure everyone has all of the the details and can replicate these on their own at home perfect perfect thank you lisa <laughs> as we've just made it to our one hour of our amazing uh cooking demo and Hanukkah celebration with Esty. Are there any final questions that anyone has? Valerie? Yeah, because I'm going to make them today. Um, how long do we cook the latkes and at what t t temperature? So uh, the latkes usually takes about 35 minutes. Um, on 375, if you use a convection oven, if you don't use a convection oven, and if you use a regular oven, then do 350, and you might need to flip them uh, halfway through. Flip them to the other side so they, they get nice and evenly cooked on both sides. Okay, I, I, didn't, I couldn't quite hear that. So 35 minutes with a, on a regular oven at 375? And no. 35 minutes on 375. Okay. For convection. Okay. Yes. Well, what about a regular oven? Regular is 350. 360? 350. 350. Yes. And, um, and probably the same amount of time, but you will need to flip them halfway through. Thank okay? you. And use, use kind of a tool like that that you can easily remove the, something like that. So to, to easily remove them so that they're not going to fall apart. They won't, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Any um, other questions? SD, someone else mentioned they thought that the convection oven was what you do at a lower lower temperature. No, the convection oven is 375 for sure. Oh my gosh. Valerie has a latka flipper that says latka on it. <laughs> that that should work. That should work for your flipping. Valerie, can you hold it up again for her to see? Let me oh, see if I can. I have the same one. <laughs> I have the same well, one. So show better you. if I did it this well, way. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions while we have Esty on? She's you know, can answer probably about non-dairy milks and uh, egg replacements, anything else for Hanukkah before we, we say goodbye. I just posted, uh, just a little side note, I just posted another soufganiot recipe, Donna. Nice. So, yes, 
So I just posted them yesterday. So if you guys are my mailing list, you would have gotten them. But if not, it's on my blog uh, or on Facebook. Um, and they're just so good. I created a healthier version. And I use that um, donut maker, you know, that uh, like, like there is a waffle maker. So there's a donut maker and that really kept it nice and moist. And, and, and small, so it's nice, uh, less, uh, less calories. You just pop one in, you know, you finish it in two bites um, and they're so good, so good. Amazing. So it's called, uh, a little uh, gluten-free and vegan uh, donut recipe, soup gagnotte. then you can go ahead and check it out. Wonderful, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, in closing, I just want to thank everyone so much for joining us for the our Hanukkah celebration and cooking demo. We are so happy to have Esty joining us. So I'm happy I met you a month and a half or two ago, Esty. Um, and thank you for all that you give to our community. And we're just so happy to have you all here as a part of our growing community. So before I turn it over to Melissa to say goodbye, I'll just say happy Hanukkah. Enjoy the last couple of days. Hopefully you have some of this delicious food. Brandon has your book. He's holding it up. Um, and thank you, everyone. And then Melissa, I don't know if you have anything to say to close as well. Nothing to add. Just really grateful to see all of you and hope you're all doing well and staying nourished. And thank you so much, Esty, for giving us this Hanukkah gift today. Great way to wrap up the towards the end of the holiday. Chag Sameach. Esty, you had a lot of thank yous and I love this and this was amazing in the chat as well and and some hearts from people so just because I know you're not yes. able to touch your computer I just wanted to share the love. <laughs> thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be here. Chag Sameach, Chag Hanukkah Sameach and hope to see you guys again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye everyone.